Anyway, welcome back to part 17. We are 117, part 17. And, uh. Watch your back. Greetings. I serve the Zandalari. Will you be? May Zani bring you fortune. Do you need protection? Anyway, we, uh. Sorry. Apologize. Got sidetracked. What are you doing here? Zandala, what is your business here? Anyway, we, uh... Anyway, so the reason why I say DDT, only those because it's a wrestling move, which is you take... If you, uh, if you do it properly, you take the guy's head, that's your, your opponent's head, put it underneath your armpit, and you drop him, but you drop him, you have to do it a certain way. There's a, uh... There's videos on YouTube of what uh, what a proper how to properly do a DDT, but the reason why I say DDT that little bell icon is because everybody says smash or rage or whatever they say. I want to be different, so that's why. Uh, maybe. Oh, okay, there it is. So anyway, so that's why I say. DDT that little bell icon so I could be different than anybody, but it's a wrestling move. I mean, I don't watch wrestling. My uh, guild, my alliance guild gets on to me about that because they make fun of me because of my southern, my southern twang. But anyway, I don't watch wrestling anymore because it's stupid. I mean, it's not stupid. It's just I don't see. I just I just do out of it because. Uh, when I was back in the 80s, the early 80s and the 90s, like to the year, maybe, maybe to the 2000s, that's when wrestling was good. Now it's just about story based. It's, that it's not story based, it's more about drama and stuff. Like in the 2000s, the 90s, like your 91, 92 areas, like that area. That's whenever WWE, that's whenever the wrestling was good. Because you had two, you had three wrestling programs. You had WCW, WWF, and ECW. Which ECW is just a joke now. But back in the day, ECW stood for Extreme Wrestling. And that's what it was, Extreme Wrestling. They, uh, they would go to, like, mix, like, uh, it wouldn't even be proper, uh, ring. It would be... Just anywhere they thought they could set up for a entertainment, uh, for anywhere where they set up the ring and fans would throw weapons in, like kendo sticks, barbed wire bats, and all that. The fans got involved in ECW, and uh, Paul Heyman was the ECW ring announcer, and oh my God, when he did that. Uh, Paul Heyman is now Brock Lesnar's trainer, or Brock Lesnar, doing something with Brock Lesnar, but that was before he did that, and then he, uh, but your Monday nights were Monday night WCW and WWF, back then they didn't have DVDs or whatever, you couldn't DVHR, so what you had to do is like if you wanted to record one show, you would set your VCR up, you would get a blank tape, you would set your VCR up. Oh, set the timer. Set the timer for 25 minutes. Your timer is set for 20. Anyway, you would set your DB your VCR. You would literally what you would have to do is you had to hook up your cable. You had to hook up the uh Work complete. the uh you had to hook up the uh the the cable line to the back of the the, the uh to the back of the uh, VCR, and then hook the antenna part to the. Uh, you would hook the cable to the end part and the uh, out the something and the uh, line in. Then you would hook the uh, the TV to the uh, line out, and that's how you recorded. You and would uh, press record. You would have it set up. Zandala will endure. Watch yourself within our city. Anyway, you would, uh... Anyway, you would, uh... Anyway, you would, uh... Anyway, you would, uh... 
that's how you would record it. You would set the timer. You would set the timer. You would set the timer and uh, you would set the timer for the VCR and then it would record. And then you could watch something, but if you were, you could record two shows at once, so. Yeah, you could record uh, two shows at once. Yeah, you couldn't record two shows at once because your VCR didn't have the capability. So, and uh, so yeah, so you would have to watch. You would literally have to watch one show, or record another one, to uh, see it. So, what you doing here? May Jani bring you fortune. We got a pair of boots. Nice. So anyway, yeah, so back then, oh, I'm sorry, I got sidetracked. You would, uh, you would, uh, you would, uh, watch one show and then watch the other one on your VCR, so. Man, I hate getting dazed off my mouth, but anyway, back then, in the 90s, you had, uh, they would, they would, they would, they would call what uh the entertain what the uh, tv professionals would call is uh monday night raw war between wwf which now is wwe world wrestling federate or world wrestling entertainment back then it used to be called war uh, world wrestling federation which was the heydays back then because they uh they did pile drivers and stuff like that but they uh but you can't do it now because it's illegal because uh one of the uh, wrestlers got paralyzed from the neck down because of uh, the guy that was doing the uh pile driver didn't do it right and it paralyzed him that's why steve austin's not a wrestler anymore because he got he got hurt and actually you can see it in one of his matches they uh televised it on tv they would televise it. They televised him getting hurt. And you can see if you look closely, if you pause it, right at the press, you can see his neck and and compressed. And that's why Steve Austin's not a wrestler anymore. But back then you had the uh, heydays. You had heydays of wrestling, which was the war between between. Uh, so anyway, we would uh. Go, we're going up here the uh yeah so anyway we would uh yeah so they had the war between wcw and wwf which ww stood for world championship yeah world championship wrestling which that's where hulk hogan was with scott hall kevin nash and uh lex luger and all of them were on WCW until Vince McMahon bought, uh, the war went on for like years until Vince McMahon bought out WWCW and all those wrestlers went to WWF and he fired most of them because, you know, they were druggies, but they're what they weren't druggies. They were addicted to drugs. They were addicted to steroids. So, but Anyway, so that went on for years. Then you had uh, Degeneration X, which was uh, part of the uh, Attitude Era, so which was pretty cool. I like that. So, but well, look at this. You came back alive. You need the room. You did what? But it is not permitted to. You are not to be killing Loa. But anyway, so yeah, that's what, uh, so we're going up to this quest right here to, uh, do this quest. But anyway, we, uh, oh, dang, I thought that was a huge drop off for a moment. <laughs> I was like, whoa, I was fixing to die, but it's not as part of the uh, zone, so. But anyway, so you had the uh, WWE Attitude Era, which Lita and uh, Trish the Stadish. Are and the offerings are ready. Now, the circle must be drawn. What do you want with Hamzabu? Greetings, outsider. Let division guide your footsteps to form the Richard Circle. Careful now. 
Bon Samdi will not be happy if the ritual gets sloppy. Anyway, I'm walking slow because I don't want to mess this up. Because I would like totally suck if I have to mess up if I mess up. But anyway, yeah. Very good. Now, sound the drum. Meta Bochu Great one, Sandy. The drum has sounded. Kuzu Tatobo. Meta Bochu Great one, Sandy. The drum has sounded in your name. These offerings await you. <laughs> I know this voice and these gifts. Very nice. Come in. Come in. Anyway, the Attitude Era, which was back then, you, the women wrestlers were not as, as, uh, they were not as, uh, how can I put this? Back then in the 90s, and women uh, weren't really wrestlers until Trish Stratus and Lita, which Lita and Trish Stratus paved the way for, for the uh, women of wrestling that are today. But if it weren't for Trish Stratus, Trish Stratus, and Lita, which... Well, hello there, handsome. You're here to pay your debts? Great one, so, Sandy. I come what there brings you to visit lonely as old we one, Sandy? Run along, man. One Sandy be watching. I need to get back to Zobal. There are still more souls to gather before I can pay off my debt. But anyway, if it weren't for Trish Stratus and all of them, they uh, there's a is that above me? Damn it! Now how in the hell do you get up there? Anyway, if it wasn't for Trish Stratus and all of them, the uh. The uh, women wrestlers today wouldn't be there. I know, and uh, Mae Young and all them pay for the rap, pay for the generations. But back then, you didn't, have, you didn't, you weren't uh, too keen on seeing women wrestling. You had a few women wrestlings that were back there back in the day. You had Trish Stratus, Tori Wilson, and Sable, and all them. They paved for the generations of now. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have women wrestling. But Trish Stratus and uh, Lita were the main two high flying uh, women. That, uh, especially Lita. Lita would just jump off of anything and just like smack you in the face. Which she was part of the uh, Hardy Boys. Which the Hardy Boys they were just insane. They did tables, ladders, chairs. They jumped off anything. You name it, if they could jump off of it, they basically jumped off of it. So that's what the Hardy Boys were. They were uh, extreme high flying wrestling. They hold, they were like, they held the tag team titles for the longest. And then you had Ric Flair, Shawn Michaels, uh, Triple H, and all that. Those were back in the heydays where wrestling was good. And it was, uh, to me, people say wrestling was fake back then, but if you ever been slapped by a professional wrestler, you would know that that shit ain't fake. Because I met a, uh, I met Farouk. He came in where I used to live at. He came in and gave me tickets to a SmackDown show, which was, uh, which he was, uh, which was in the uh, making coliseum one day so i went with my brother and my neighbor we all went to uh we all went to see it and i met uh, a uh, wrestler there i don't it wasn't rick flair because rick flair wasn't on smackdown but i met one and he slapped me and let me tell you that slap hurt yes i've been professionally slapped by a wrestler and let me tell you, those slaps ain't fake. Those are real slaps that you hear. That Ric Flair does. 
I didn't get slapped by Ric Flair, but the slaps they do, they're real. The punches now, the wrestler that told me, that, uh, that told me, the, the, uh, the punches are like, they don't really like punch you. They like stomp their feet and then hit you. So to make it look like they're hitting you and then they just act accordingly. But all the uh, wrestling moves are staged or not staged. They're, uh, <coughs> excuse me, they're, uh, yeah. All right, hang on a second. I don't have a target. Uh, so anyway, they uh, they uh, they uh, they uh, they are coordinated to where they protect the uh, protect each other's that are uh, that are wrestling each other. So, but back in the heydays, like in the nineties. It really wasn't all that. I mean, it was in your face. And yes, I've been to a rat. Huh? I've been to a, uh, what is it? A, uh, yes, I've been to Monday Night Raw because it was, uh, back then, before they built the Mercedes Benz Stadium, they, uh, Gohun is the master of this land. Soon even that fool born Sandy will be made to serve. You know, anyway, they, uh, they, uh, They, uh, before they built the, uh, Georgia Dome, or before they built the Mercedes Benz, they, uh, had wrestling that went to the Georgia Dome, and my uncle at the time, his boss, uh, owned the contract for the, for the Brave Stadium, for the Brave Stadium, which was Turner Field, before they built the new one, he had the contract for that, and his boss, he would, uh, his boss would get me tickets to wrestling that would come to the Georgia Dome. So that's how I went to a WWE or a WWF concert. So I need to target something. But, Where are you? but anyway, so yeah, that's how I'm and I got backstage passes because once when the show was over, I would go backstage because my uncle worked there as a paramedic. So and he would say some of the guys that would Show up. Dingo. Yay! Okay, Mother talked about a deal with one Sandy. I bet she's still in the temple somewhere. <laughs> Little Miss Be Right, her mother not on the other side. Go on, go on. Find this your wayward mother, and I'll bring them together again. But anyway, so uh, yeah, that's what uh, so yeah, I met the back. I went backstage because my uncle, he was a paramedic at the time. He was a paramedic, and uh, so my boss, his boss, would have the uh, contract for it. So I would go backstage after the event to see how they tear, tore down the ring. And uh, I gotta say that that ring is like impressive how they tear it down. So. But yeah, then I went I to the Braves to game because my uncle could uh, give me tickets to the Braves game, so which was pretty cool. I, I digged it. Uh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, my uncle would. Uh, me and Mother met the priests here. I got this dress from them too. They were so nice. Dark in there. You go on. I'll be right behind you. Anyway, so yeah, my uncle would uh, take me to like when they came to the shows after they after yeah when they came to the Georgia Dome, which they would circle, it would circulate, and I would go and watch a WWE uh, or a Ooh, I w think we're close. Mother, where are you? I don't have a target. Anyway, I would watch a, uh, I would watch it and then uh, get to meet the wrestlers backstage. I wish I had their autographs, I but I wasn't thinking I was just like a little kid at a candy store.
So anyway, yeah, that's what we uh, that's what we would do. And uh, so that's what I did as a kid. As I went to like uh, events and stuff, I went to my first concert I ever went to was a John Mellencamp concert, and I was 18 when I went there. That's the only concert I've been to out of my life. And then now, mother and I will be together forever. Mm, it is true, mother did wrong, but I forgive her. Now we can spend the rest of eternity together on the other side. I hope mother and I will see you again. So anyway, yeah, so when I was 18, my dad took me to a John Mellencamp, John Mellencamp concert, and that, uh, I liked it, it was pretty cool, but it, the thing was, so we had to drive like three and a half hours, so back then I was a lot smaller than I am now, and I could sit in the back seat of a car without actually hurting because back then I didn't do something stupid like get drunk and hurt, hurt my back, so... Oh yeah, we're just gonna aggro everything, and then uh, when we get here, guess what? Watch this. Watch this. You watching? You watching? Boom! Feign death. And go ahead and kill this dude. <laughs> I don't know why my pet's attacking. I just I accidentally clicked on that. But anyway, we uh, we're uh, we're about seven minutes out for the uh, video to be ended. So, but anyway, uh. Yeah, we uh, we uh. You are going to regret, fool. Your soul now belongs to Gahoon. But anyway, we uh. But anyway, yeah, that's what I did. And then uh, the week later, a week later, my dad took me to Tennessee. <coughs> this is not what you promised. But anyway, a week later, my dad took me to Tennessee, which is, I went to Ruby Falls, which was a horrible idea because, A, I'm a, uh, I'm claustrophobic. Like, if I get into small spaces, I get really paranoid. And, like, because, A, because I watch a lot of horror movies and people be in the confined spaces, what happens. So, but I went to Ruby Falls, and I got to say, being underneath the, uh, being underneath there is like scares the crap out of me underneath the, all that. Ah, Salazi. <laughs> she be dawdling among the living for too long now. Do whatever it takes to bring her soul to the soul, so very bitch and lower. Hmm. But anyway, so yeah, that's what we would uh, do. As I went down there, and I gotta say, it was beautiful down there. It's just the problem is, is uh, it ain't designed for big people. I can tell you that because that was like when I was in high school. In high school, I was uh, 305 to 310. Like the highest I got was like 310. I did not get above 310 because I was uh, because I was exercising because uh, PE. And then I was trying out for football because the coaches thought I would make a great uh, football player. So, but anywho, so yeah, those those are the only places I've been is Tennessee and uh, to a John Mellon Cougar Camp concert, and that was it. Other than that, I don't do much. And then I went to a bar, the Whiskey River, which is uh, down, which is in Macon. From where I'm at, about a 30 minute drive or 45 to an hour drive. Work complete. Anyway, we uh. I need to get closer. Anyway, so yeah, I went there when I was 21, and uh, my brother took me because I've never been to a bar like that, and I gotta say I wasn't impressed. Just ain't ain't my style to go to clubs like that. I'm just sorry, I'm just not a club type person because A, I don't like loud music. So, yeah, I don't like loud music anymore. I mean, when I was a kid, the loud the music was, the better I liked it. So, but now as I get older, I don't like loud music. Like, matter of fact, I don't even listen to music hardly. Oh, oh that's a mighty sword. Oh, old boy and Sam, they feeling spry now. <laughs> yeah, 
The powers be growing. Anyway, so uh yeah, that's uh Anyway, so uh yeah. So I don't do much but play video games. I want to go to Vegas. <laughs> what you be asking about there? See you soon. Come to the court of spirits. <laughs> it's time we be finalizing our contract. Uh oh, contract. Uh oh. So, but anyway, we uh. So yeah, I I really don't go nowhere because most places I don't like because I don't like people. So, but I'll be quiet because we're about to do a cutscene. Hello, hello. <laughs> You're going to make a deal, eh? <laughs> One someday, at last, you left the safety of that ruin. Mm. You look like a smart woman, yet here you be, interrupting me in my own temple. I give you this one chance to submit to the blood god. Surrender or be destroyed. No one be telling Buan Samdi what to do. So, <laughs> you think you have what it takes to face me, little thing? Bold words, but you be meeting the same fate what you as be asking I who refuse Gahoon. Rise, minions. Rise and destroy this. Fool, Loa. I can't attack your soul for my master. Your soul with that for Gahoon. Them dancing bones she call minions. The mago fall had a true Grant love. Me your enough. I need to target something. You want this battle, but I you don't can't have hide here forever. Soon as you leave, you die. Such odd. Audacity! An attack in my own temple? <laughs> Goodness me. They go and be mighty sorry. Mm hmm Mighty sorry. Don't you go forgetting our deal now. Keep sending souls to Buan Samdi. <laughs> if you want to keep me favor. So anyway, we are. Uh, so yeah. I don't get out much because a I don't like people because I have um and and uh I'm uh I'm anti and social like literally like I get paranoid when I'm outside of my own house I don't know why I just do so yeah we uh oh stupid phone I hate this phone so yeah we're gonna stop the video here and uh. We're gonna stop the video here before when we get to this quest, so that way the next video will be picked up. So, Tolens, what brings you to this accursed place? Nah, this place isn't so bad. We're on a pilgrimage, and I have a feeling you're gonna make it harder than it has to be. Princess, the Horde be sending us reinforcements soon. I don't think we have the time to be getting involved. I have much more to do. Anyway, if you're new to this channel, go ahead and subscribe. If you already subscribed, go ahead and DDT that little bell icon. You'll be notified when I upload. It's easy as that. Anyway, have a great day. Peace.